Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, let's talk about Zebra Danios. All right, everyone, if you're new here or maybe you're returning for another vi uh, view of video, I would greatly appreciate it if you consider liking and subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Uh, anything would help, and I appreciate you watching. So today I wanted to do another species profile on zebra danios. Uh, these are easily one of my favorite schooling fish. You can see them swimming up at the top of the tank. Let it focus back in. They tend to hang out closer to the top of the water column. As you can see, they're pretty active swimmers. So that was the first thing I wanted to talk about was their nature. So like I said, these are really fun to watch, cool schooling fish. They're fairly fearless. Uh, you can stick your hand in there and even sometimes they'll nibble on your finger because they think it's something to eat. When I put test strips down into the water, they tend to sometimes bite the test strips. They're just very curious and very fun to watch, an easygoing kind of schooling fish. They're very much aggressive eaters. Uh, I won't feed them here in this video, but you can imagine they're up there at the top of the water already. As soon as you drop food in, they're ready for you. And they aggressively eat food when you drop it into the tank. So overall, they're just a very good-natured schooling fish, and they're a good community fish. Now as far as like tank size and parameters, uh, I would say anywhere from a 20 gallon up would be good. You could probably put them in a 10 gallon, but as you can see they do like to swim around. So they would appreciate the room to swim. Uh, this particular tank that they're in is a 40 breeder, so it does have a decent amount of room being a 3 foot tank uh, that they can swim around to their heart's content and back and forth and as you see them doing now. so. Yeah, anywhere from tw 20 gallons up would probably be fine. Probably a 20 long is a little better. Uh, they tend to hang out at the top anyway, and a 20 long is a bit longer than a 20 high. So, uh, But you could put them in a 20 high also, depending on the setup you have and the other fish that you want to put in your tank. So it's all depend dependent on that. But I would say a 20, 20 gallon tank is a good, a good starting point. As far as parameters go, most of your typical tropical fish parameters are going to work for these these guys uh, very well. Your typical temperatures of anywhere from 72 up into the low 80s is probably fine. Um, as far as I can tell, they're not super picky about water parameters as far as your uh, nitrates go. I try to keep this tank below 50, uh, and I usually do keep it below 50 uh, parts per million nitrate. Uh, it is fairly heavily stocked. I'll talk about the uh, tank mates in just a minute. Uh, so I do a weekly water change of about 50% on this tank to keep it around below 50 to the 20s when I do a water change. So pretty hardy fish overall. I haven't lost one at all except for uh, <clears throat> a few that jumped out when I first got them. And I do have a lid on this tank, I just had to make it tighter. Uh, so that's something to be mindful of. Now as far as feeding them, um, they, as I mentioned, they swim very high in the water column. So most of your flakes and things that sink very slowly are going to work great for these fish. I tend to feed them flakes uh, and pellets that sink very slowly or granules that sink very slowly and they eat that up. I feed them the bug bites spirulina formula flakes. Uh, I've got a, another bug bite with small granules that I feed them sometimes. Uh, and of course, <clears throat> they will go wild for any frozen or freeze dried uh, blood worms, brine shrimp, uh, meiosis shrimp, anything like that will be perfectly fine for these fish and they will gladly eat it up uh, with zeal. <laughs> And occasionally, you know, I do feed uh, rapashi to this tank, and I do occasionally notice that they will venture to the bottom of the tank to take some nibbles on rapashi. So they definitely like that as well. Now, as far as tank mates, and this is what we'll talk about what I have 
in this particular tank, uh, pretty much anything that's not going to eat them is going to be fine. So most of your tropical community fish are going to be fine, and some of your less aggressive and semi-aggressive cichlids that don't get too large are probably going to be fine in this tank. I have them in with one common pleco, which is hiding under the piece of driftwood there. You can see him, he sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, there is a bristlenose pleco in here that's usually hard to find because it's hiding, but it's a long, thin, super red bristlenose pleco. Uh, there are 12 peppered quarries on the bottom. You can see them foraging around for food. Um, and as well as on the right side, you can see on, in between the rocks, there's a Bolivian ram uh, that's fairly large. It's an older one. And you might be able to see them in the water column. There are two German blue rams, but they're very small. I recently, I recently got these rams, so they're not very big yet. Um, but there's two of those, and I think they're on this side of the tank. But they're pretty small right now. They have some growing to do. And as you can see also, schooling wise, there's about 10 or so cherry barbs, which are kind of, tend to be toward the middle of the tank, whereas the zebra daniels tend to be toward the middle to the very top of the tank. And all of these fish <clears throat> get along very well and uh, seem to do fine. So the zebra daniels are a great addition to a tropical tank, tropical community tank. Uh, in my opinion. Now as far as care goes, these fish are super easy to care for and in that sense they're great for a beginner fish. Uh, I think in fact these fish might be great to get someone hooked into the hobby because they're just so easy to care for and they're so fun to watch. They're quick swimmers and like I said they swim toward the top of the tank. You can see them kind of getting a little aggressive with each other. That's fairly typical but it seems more playful more than anything in my opinion. But like I said, fun to watch, great beginner fish. And you know, a lot of people will say that a particular kind of fish tends to be at the top of the water column. And I found that some of these schooling fish actually don't get that high in the water column. But the zebra daniels uh, are definitely an exception to that. I do find that they tend to hang out in the upper more, uppermost parts of the tank, which is nice because I have schooling fish that are supposed to hang out in the uppermost parts of the tank and they actually tend to hang out in the middle to lower section of the tank. So zebra daniels definitely do hang out in the top part of the tank and that is a great plus on their side. So the bottom line is they're a great fish, great community fish, easily one of my favorite schooling fish. So I highly recommend that anyone considering these fish, you might as well give them a try. They're, they'd be a great addition to your tank. So tell me what you think. Have you kept these fish in the past? And if you have, let me know. Did you enjoy them? Uh, so please consider leaving a comment below, letting me know about your experience. So thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.